From the studios in beautiful Oceanport, New Jersey, welcome to the biggest and greatest podcast ever. I'm your host, Ray Kay. Hey, we got an exciting show today. I have a legend on the phone. I, I, I think he's a legend. He's laughing, but I know he is because he, he, uh, he worked with a legend. So I think that makes him a legend. He really needs no introduction. Liberty DeVito, thank you for coming on. I am a legend in my own mind. <laughs> hey, I think you're one of the top 15 drummers of all time, according to the, the things I read. So that I think that puts you in a legend category, right? Uh, yeah, you got, you got to remember, this legend takes the garbage out every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all part of it, you know? I mean, you know, the normal guy legend. Uh, yeah. Libby, let's, let's talk about, I want to I I hit right to this about, the, about 1964 with the Beatles, because... Uh, you know, I mean, you saw him on, and you, know, you always hear the Beatles influence so many people, including including Billy Joel. I mean, I, I've heard him talk yes. about it on on, on uh, interviews. Uh, tell me about that day, and and what struck you about the Beatles, and and which Beatles was it? Ringo that you loved, or John, or, or just tell me about the, the the first few minutes you saw the Beatles. Well, well let me tell you, it, 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 the story goes that I was hearing about this band, the Beatles. You, you, we'd hear about them in America, you know, that there was this band, the Beatles. I, and I think it was uh, the Jack Paw show. Mm -hmm. uh, they showed this group in England that one of them mentioned that they liked jelly beans. And so they showed this clip. Of, of the Beatles, but I remember just seeing their legs and girls throwing jelly beans. Do so you them. remember that Jack Parr little thing there, 1963, late 63? You remember seeing that? I remember seeing that. Wow. So okay. I, I, I remember like, okay, there's this new group because I was always into music, always into music. I loved music when I was like uh, young. I used to mow lawns. Like I lived on Long Island. I would mow lawns and, you know, take the money and go buy 45s. The first 45 I ever bought was called The Book of Love by the Monotones. You okay. Uh, Love them. Love the Four Seasons. Loved all that stuff. Dion was one of my favorites. And so I was always into music. But now there was this new group coming out uh, that I was hearing about from England. And um, that's when uh, when Ed Sullivan had booked them for the for the TV show, for his TV show, he had seen the, the chaos that was going on at the London airport. And he wanted to know who these guys were. He wanted to be the first one to introduce them to America. Mm -hmm. When he when he heard about the Jack Parr thing, he wanted to cancel them, which was unbelievable to me. He wanted to so, cancel them because he didn't get yeah, them first. Is that because he didn't get them first? Wow. Yeah. Okay. But the guy that was supposed to do it, you know, had a cool head and thought, "Let me wait a couple of days, and I'll go back to Ed. See if he still wants to do it." <laughs> and it turns out that you know, better for everybody that he didn't cancel them. But anyway. Um, Grow, growing up, I, I wanted to play an instrument. My parents bought me the drums. Because my father told me later on in life, because of course, they didn't make Prozac when I was a kid. Okay. So he bought me drums to get my energy out. And, is that, is that uh, a large part of drummers that it, it, it gets the, the you know the frustrations or just you know you're a teenager you get you get you get stuff out? Is that is that a large part of getting into drums actually? Oh, I think so. I think so. You ever notice that most drummers are are a little bit more insane than the rest of the band <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be you know uh, actually except for ringo but we'll get into that but uh well, well really know. really when you think about it ringo ringo uh you know if you watch a hard day's night ringo's the one that's up there dancing all the time and jumping all around and, and you know true true right 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 so a lot of energy the drummers have a lot of energy that needs to come out somewhere okay okay so so anyway, my parents bought me these drums. I take up drums in sixth grade. I'm playing uh, uh, in, the, in the school band. I can't do the buzz roll in the Star Spangled Banner. And the teacher says, put the sticks down, DeVito. You'll never do anything with the drums. Okay, frustration sets in, right? But I'm still into music, still listening to music. Music becomes Now you're into life. 61, 62. Let's give a little history. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I was born in 60, so I missed that run, but I read back on it. And that's, you know, you're getting some, some, some you're between Elvis and the Beatles. It, wasn't that, was that a strange time for music in 61? I mean, it was a very strange time for okay. music because, because, you know, like uh, uh, itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, yellow pop. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that kind of, of stuff. Right. Frankie, kind of stuff. Uh, you know, those guys. I can't remember their All names. Those, yeah. those joke things hello mother hello father you know yeah 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 uh, purple people eating things and stuff like that were, co were coming out so it wasn't a great time for music uh, i mean the pat boone was doing little richard songs and stuff like that because at the time w white kids weren't supposed to be listening to black music 
Okay. That was a big, big okay. deal back then. Too. Okay. Anyway, so uh, now I that that's like sixty one, sixty two. Now, are you in Brooklyn? Now, are you in Brooklyn? No, no, I'm on Long Island. You're on Long Island. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I was, I was, that's right. I was that's born, right. That's born right. in Brooklyn, but my father was a cop here, so he moved us. You're in Long Island. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I'm, I'm uh, now going into junior high school, right? And I'm walking the halls in junior high school, which is like seventh and eighth grade, ninth grade. And I'm noticing that there's these other beings there called the girls, you know. <laughs> and I want to meet them. That's the age. Yeah. Yes, that's the age, perfect age. And all the girls in my school, they like sports. You know, the guys that, that played sports, they like the baseball player, they like the, you know, the football guys. They were real jocks in my school. I wasn't like that. I, like I tell my kids, dad, dad used to go to school dressed like John Travolta in Greece. That's okay. the way I, okay. you know, I was that, I, that guy. What, what, right? what was your pecking order guy? Were you like the, the, the you know, like in the middle of the pack or were you your own guy or did you, you know, I, I guess you weren't one of the nerds, but I mean, where were you in that, in that thing? I, I would say I was... Well, let's put it this way. In my, my senior year, I was in my yearbook. You know where they have the mathletes and the science club mm-hmm. and all those different things? I'm in the three o'clock club, which means you got to stay after school more than anybody else. Okay. Okay. Because I, I was getting in trouble. I had a friend. Got it. Uh, my neighbor down the block, his name was Mike Lackis. He was older than I was. Uh, the whole family was friends with my family. And Mike, when we used to have detention, he used to be chewing gum. And the, and the teacher would say, lack of spitting your gum out. And he used to literally just spit it out on the floor like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had, I would hang with those kind of guys okay. rather than, than the jocks. Right. Um, so so now what am I get, what am I going to do? I tried sports. I, I found out I had to wear glasses by trying to catch a baseball. And um, so there was really no way for me to get girls at the time mm-hmm. that's when i was 13 in february of uh, 1964 i was turning i would turn 14 in august so you're in eighth grade basically I'm in eighth grade okay got it mm-hmm. and there they were in black and white on the ed sullivan show mm-hmm. and i panned the, you know I, I was watching them and, and and when i saw the crowd of girls screaming you know I went, oh, my God, this is fantastic. And then I saw my sister and her friends watching the black and white TV, screaming at the black and white TV. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and I thought, this, this is the way to meet girls. I want to do what those guys are doing. What I pointed at wasn't the drums. It was, I want to be in a band like that that makes music that drives people crazy. That's what I want to do. Did you like the music or was it literally just the girls screaming that, that you didn't even care about? They say, hey, look, I want to do that because the girls are screaming. doesn't even no, care I what love, the music looks, I, sounds like. I, I, mm-hmm. It's funny that I say this now because if you look at Beatle videos from the television show, uh, but I love the energy that they had, mm-hmm. the, the, the excitement of the songs that they were writing. It, it was just so great, you know, because only by, by then we only knew I want to hold your hand. You know, and then after that, she loves you, and all those other songs came out. But um, you know, their energy, their look, their presence—the fact that they were controlling this entire moment. The four, these four guys that were on stage, right? Had everybody swooning. Even my, my parents, my my mother used to wear a "I Love John" button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, that's so, funny. I don't know why. It's just funny. Yeah, yeah. It, it is funny. Yeah. And uh, you know, it was just, it was just a, a moment of like, oh, oh my god, that is ours. The, those guys are ours. You know, I, I'm 13, soon to be 14. I'm in eighth grade. And now Elvis is dead. Forget him. Right, right. That girls, 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 and uh, Flaming Star or whatever, those movies, right? Right, right. The Beatles are ours. This is our thing now. You and, know, so and that, that, did you know they were going to be there? I mean, I mean, I mean, they could have died out, but did you have that feeling that hey, you know, this is it? These guys, are, uh, this, these guys have staying power. Did you have that initial feeling that this is it? We got well, hope. Well, you, 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 know? you think about it now, and you, and you, you know, because the four seasons had been around for so long, and Dion had been around for so long. Because when you're young, it, it seems like a year is an eternity. Mm-hmm. You know, so the Beatles, yeah, who they, they kept coming out with great songs. They just kept coming out with great songs. And, um, you know, I mean, when you think about it now, the, the songs that they wrote, I didn't know that they were going to write songs that great. I guess when Eleanor Rigby kind of came out, 
everybody kind of knew, or yesterday, everybody kind of knew, like, okay, these guys are a little better than we think they are. Okay, you know? okay, another level up when those kind of songs uh, came out, even though they were sad songs, uh, kind of, you yeah, know? Right. Okay. Right. It's okay. Just those melodies that they had, and, and just just the way they wrote the songs was incredible. So now you go to school. All right, the Beatles. You know Ed Sullivan. I, I I guess you must have been like a different person. You must have felt like oh. the temp twenty feet tall going in. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh, yeah. Because because I love music, and now everybody's going to love music because of the Beatles. And now that broke down the uh, the hitter look like I had and the collegiate look which was mattress shirts and, and uh, Wrangler jeans it broke it down everybody mm-hmm. became equal now ah, you know okay okay ha- ah, ha- yeah. hair, hair started to grow longer did you grow your hair time. long like that with the bangs in the front oh yeah yeah okay. yeah oh yeah I okay. used to get in trouble all the time at school because I, I wanted to you know, be at the height of fashion. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> which, which in school isn't a good thing, right? You got to stay in your place and not not cause any waves, right? Oh, my! Uh, in the, in the hallway in up in Secret High School, there was a mirror, and on top of the mirror, put in there by one of the senior classes before me, it said, um, uh, "Act to please thyself, but dress to please others." Hmm. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh. Oh. That's, even t- today, that sounds really weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very bizarre. Now, did they have corporal punishment back then? I mean, did they hit you with the ruler in '63, '64? Oh yeah, Mr. Sinusa Lombardi used to hit us with the ruler. And I remember when I got my first pair of Beetle boots, and I, w- I was in school, and everybody used to say, "Oh, what are you a matador? What are you from Spain?" Or what? You know, they, they just didn't get it. You know, I mean, <laughs> did you did you eventually gravitate toward the, one of the Beatles? I mean, whether it was the Ringo the Drummer, or you know, was there any one that you liked a lot, or was it all the same? You know, that well, just the, you know the Beatles. Or? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest with you, I I wanted to play drums because that's that's what I started out doing. But uh-huh. I really wanted to be Paul McCartney. Okay, because of why. Yeah. He played an instrument and sing. The singer always was like, that's the guy. Okay, okay. Because yeah. back then, he was like the real, even though John was the leader, Paul was like the, the front guy they sort of came across like, right? He was like, right. right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cutie guy, you know, like he was like, yeah. And he had the cool songs too. I mean, John had cool songs, but Paul singing All My Loving. Right, 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 right. It's insane. So you're a Paul guy off the bat. Yeah, right off the bat, it was a Paul guy. Okay, definitely. okay. Now, does the drum start kicking in now? Now, what, like, when does that start coming into force? That uh, I'm still playing. Uh, you know, I still have the, the set of drums. The next day, every kid that I knew went out and either bought a set of drums or, or a guitar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so my friend Jerry, uh, he uh, bought a, had a Kent guitar. Got a Kent guitar. Uh, another friend of ours uh, had a uh, another Kent guitar, and we started this band. But we needed another guy uh, to play, and we're we're standing around, and our friend Mike comes walking in the room, and he's got his hair parted on the side, and it's combed like Paul, and he's kind of thin and tall. And I asked him, I said, "Do you play an instrument?" He said, "No." I said, "Well, you should because you look a lot like Paul." <laughs> want to be in a band and he and his father got him an, an instrument the guitar okay you know? so he's in so that's how the, <laughs> that, that's how the band started that's how the whole thing started is that 64 now i mean right away or is it six, yeah right away 64 right away. you got the band okay yes okay yes. so you're 13 going on 14 and you're in a band now yeah wow okay 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 it was, it was, it was a big deal too because because now you know we eventually started to get good mike uh, eventually got a bass guitar, so now we have a bass guitar. But we were playing instrumentals at the time. We were playing stuff like the Ventures music and stuff like that because we couldn't find a singer, and nobody, none of, no one of us sang. So we we're doing a lot of instrumentals, and we were asked by um, a, a girl in school if we could play a school dance, and we said, "Yeah, sure, we'd love to do that." But she said, "You guys have to get a singer, though." So we recruited this this guy uh, who was a senior at the time, and he really did not want to play with us, but he thought, okay, I'll give you guys a break, I'll play with you, and I'll sing with you. He's a senior in high school, and you're in eighth grade. 
yeah, we're an ace. Ace maybe going into nice now and stuff wow. like that. Wow. Okay. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and so he comes and and he we have a couple of rehearsals. We we, we do like um, you know a couple of the simpler Beatles songs and rock and roll songs and stuff like that. And we play the high school dance. We go over so well that the next day when I go to school, people are coming up to me. And they're saying, oh, my God, your band was so great. Oh, my God, you played drums. You're great. You are the drummer that played the other night. I finally got an identity. I was the drummer in the school. Okay. I was, uh, the I was that drummer. guy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now self-esteem goes up. I'm, I would imagine you girls become potentially, you know, uh, come in the, into play, I would imagine. You must get start getting girlfriends. Is that true? All this stuff starts to meld together? All this stuff starts to come together now. Okay. You know, uh, and, and um, you know, it's all because of that first night on the, when the Beatles won that Sullivan show. Now, if the Beatles didn't happen, the, the whole thing would be different. You probably, you, you know, you always hear that. What would happen if the Beatles didn't happen? I guess you wouldn't have, Bill, you know, Billy Joel, you wouldn't have you, you wouldn't have, I guess, so many people. Is that right? Or would eventually you have gotten into it? You know, I, I, don't, I probably would have continued to play, but I don't know... The the way the way I play, there wasn't a Ringo before there was a Ringo, you know, because there were studio musicians that played with a lot of the groups, like the Beach Boys and stuff like that, like you know the the um, the Wrecking Crew, they were studio guys. Um, you found out that that all the guys in um, in England too, when when George Wanton first the, those first came in, they, he wanted to use a, Andy White was the drummer's name right. who played on Love Me Do, the right. studio guy. Right. Ringo was unique because he was the guy that played on the record and he was the guy that played live. So he he was unique. He was the first of wow. that kind. Okay, because he's doing everything. He's out in front on TV. He's live, okay, on record. On, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. and he's playing, he's playing rock and roll. If that didn't happen, the rock and roll transition... I think it would have been a whole lot slower and a whole lot different. Mm-hmm. Okay, you, you know, because uh, I mean, there was there was great rock and roll out, out before the Beatles. Like uh, uh, one of my favorite tunes is um, uh, "Rock and Robin." Uh, you mm-hmm. know the song "Rock and Robin"? Yeah. Uh, uh, Earl Palmer plays drums on that. Now Earl Palmer was a jazz guy, but. You know, when rock and roll came about, they started to play rock and roll, and the feel of that record is is so great. Yeah, just like uh, yeah. just like there's uh, um, Panama Francis plays on Dion's The Wanderer. The the feel of the record is is the drum is the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it right. makes makes Dion sing a certain way, makes the band play a certain way. Just that whole feel. I I don't know if 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 that would have been the the course that I would have taken. Without the rough edge of the rock and roll that the Beatles had. Okay. 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 You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ringo was he? Was he? You always hear this too. I mean, you're a drummer. You would. Uh, I'm sure he was a great drummer, but was he really great, Ringo? Or, or did he just kind of get lucky that you, you hear that too? That he just happened to be the guy that they got. Uh, of course, he fit. He looked right. He, all that stuff. Was, was he great at drumming? Look, this is what I say when somebody says something about that a drummer's great or a drummer's not great. Yeah. I always say, if you took, um, like, let's say, Larry Mullen from U2, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you really don't notice him in the band. Right. You go see Bono and, and The Edge, you know those names. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Larry Mullen, eh, he's yeah. the drummer in, in U2. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you got, you got him, and you got this guy named Buddy Rich, who leads his own orchestra, who mm-hmm. is probably the most famous name in drumming, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He's an idol to millions of drummers. He's he, Drummers follow him and listen to him and learn from him all the time. He's great, right? Mm-hmm. If you ask somebody on the street, Buddy Rich, what do you think? He's a great drummer. Ask somebody on the street, Larry Mullen, what do you think? Who is he? <laughs> right right yeah absolutely okay absolutely all right now just for one night let's take buddy rich and put him in u2 and let's take larry mullen and put him in front of big, buddy rich's big band okay that's fun okay right. yeah okay uh-huh. larry mullen would be so boring in front of buddy rich's big band and buddy rich would overplay so much in u2 
Okay. That you'd be like, what? What is this guy doing? He's ruining the songs. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So when I say somebody's great, it's in their situation. Mm -hmm. What they're in right now, they're doing a great job. It's great. Ringo and the Beatles was to the to complement the songs that those two guys were writing and George too. That he made up some fantastic parts. He listened. He was a listener. He listened to them. So there probably couldn't have been a better drummer in the Beatles than Ringo, basically, is what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Even John said, right, uh, uh, Ringo's not the best drummer in the Beatles. <laughs> 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 well, he might have just been, been being John. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he was just being John. But, but you, you know, the whole thing of, of, of like, what Ringo, the parts that he made up, especially now that they, they remixed all these, you know, Sgt. Pepper and the White Album and stuff like that. The stuff that Ringo plays on Sgt. Pepper is amazing. Hmm. Okay. It, it's, it's amazing. You try to take the fill that's in a little help from my friends, mm -hmm. that first break when it goes, da, 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 boom, mm -hmm. boom. Da, right. Try to put something else there. Just try to imagine something else there. You I, can't. Okay. It's the perfect fill. Okay. 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 Tomorrow never knows. Ringo was always proud of that. And rain. No rain. I think he said rain. 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 Is, was it that great yeah. a drum? I was listening the other day. It does. It, it. It. It is pretty powerful. Like for a Ringo thing. Yeah, um, it's, it's mm -hmm. powerful for a Ringo thing, and it, and it's even it's even more like a Keith Moon thing. That's sloppy but thought out. Okay. You know, when, okay. When, okay. He, when he starts his fills on that hi hat, when he just opens the hi hat with that, you know that kind of stuff. Right. Right. It's incredible. Incredible. Have you Have you ever met Ringo? Like we're flying all over the place here, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. we're winging it as we say. Have you met, ever met Ringo? Yes, I did. I met him. The first time I met him was with his first All Star band. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went backstage, uh, went in his dressing room, and I shook his hand and I said, uh, Ringo, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. And he said, well, at least you're not blaming me for it. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect Beatle line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, a couple of tours later, I went to one of the shows and got to play a little help with my friends on his set when he sang it out front oh okay 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 what was that like was that you know, like, like an, well, an awesome or that know? was so yeah. freaking awesome because before i went on now i knew the the drum tech because he had worked with us and um he said to me he goes whatever you do you know he knows i'm a hard hitter he says whatever you do do not break that ride cymbal it's the one that he played on the ed sullivan show oh <laughs> pressure Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> What's with the hard drumming though? Is that just you just letting it loose, or I guess Ringo, I guess wasn't a hard drummer. Is, it, is there just uh, difference in style with the hard drum? Well, no. In the beginning, he played hard. He played hard. You, if you watch that, uh, that the Washington show Washington Coliseum. That, that that that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, one. yeah. 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 He's he's he's, he's, he's adrenalinized on that. It seems. You know. Definitely. Okay, definitely. Okay. Did um. Was it weird that Ringo, I don't know, when you meet your idol, um, did it live up to it? Or I know he's very short. I mean, was that kind of weird that you were so much taller than Ringo? I know it's an odd thing to say, but. You know, <laughs> no, I mean, it's not an odd, uh, not an odd thing to say, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. But no, meeting him, I knew they were small. They, they uh, you know, they, you saw pictures of them all the time standing next to Ed Sullivan. Mm -hmm. and it's like a giant compared to them. And, you know, but it's funny that you say that because. Uh, about I would say three or four years ago, I met Dave Grohl, right? Right. And and he came out to me and he shook my hand and he looked at me and he said, "Wow, I thought you would be a whole lot bigger the way you play the drums." Hmm. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. How tall? And, how and tall are you, Liberty? Five eleven and a half. Okay, that's pretty tall. Right? Yeah, yeah, well, almost tall. almost six foot. Yeah, but you know, I always ask people that when they meet me, I say, "Do I look bigger in person, or do I look bigger behind the set?" <laughs> okay. <laughs> usually, usually they're like, "I was too far away; I couldn't really." Sit. Plus, you're up on the drums a little bit, so I, I could see how the yeah. image is, is, you know, like six eight probably or something. You know, plus the power yeah, of the, you know, your arms kind of hover over the over the drums. Have you met Have you met Paul or George? Or I would imagine you didn't meet John. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but do you, have you met any of the other Beatles? I didn't meet John or George. Uh, I did play in the studio with Paul. Um, we did 
two songs. Wow. Tell me which, about which, that whole thing, which, please. Which came out on an EP in, in England. Um, I get a phone call. What year? Now, what, what year are we now? Oh, God. It's I would say 94? Like, no, this is 80, 80 something, maybe 80. I think my, my daughter Tori was very young. So, 80. What was Tori born? 83, 80, 84, maybe something like All that. All right. Okay. 85. Okay. okay. Uh huh. Right. So uh, um, I get the I get this call now. I, now our sound man for, for the Billy Joel sound man is going to get married, and I'm in the bridal party, right? And there, there's this they're going to have this dinner for the people in the bridal party before he gets married, right? Okay. And I'm supposed to go to this, right? I get a phone call, and um, the, the it's Phil Ramone's assistant, and he said uh, Phil wants in the studio on such and such date. I said, oh, man, I can't, I can't do it. I got to do uh, this bridal party dinner. He goes, um, um, you might want to change that. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, dude, I can't. Who, who's it with? He said, I can't tell you. I said, you got to tell me. Who, who's it with? And, and so after about 10 minutes of going back and forth like this, he goes, okay, it's Paul McCartney. Oh, okay. okay. I went. I'm going to call you right back. So, <laughs> Hold the date. So, right? yeah. so listen, I didn't know what to do. So I went to the m most wise person that I always went to when I had a little bit of a problem, my mother. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Good I choice. Said, uh, Good choice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I said to my mother, I said, look, um, I got this session and Phil Ramon wants me to do it. And it's the same night as the bridal party thing that I have to go to. And my mother was like, well, you know. You you committed to your friend. You really have to go to this party, and and then she said, "Who's the session with?" And I said, "Paul McCartney." She said, "Frig your buddy, man." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> you got your answer. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up doing it, right? Um, it, it's funny, I'm, I'm coming down uh, my driveway to go to the train station because I always took the train into the city from Long Island. And in the mailbox is the Rolling Stone and Paul's on the cover. So I get to read this article all the way in about Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. And I start to think, what, is, what does he want with me? What? what he cho he me? chose you. He chose you. Yeah, why me? Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so legitimate I, he question. Doesn't even, yeah. He doesn't know who I am. What? Why me? All right, so I get there early because I want to set the drums up. Phil wants everything to be perfect when he walks in and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm just listen we're listening back to something, and the first one to walk in the room is Linda, right? She's married to Linda. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. The first thing she does is points at me and said, I know who you are. We've been watching your videos. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm like, oh, my God. Talk about feeling good after hearing yeah. that, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. And then, then he walks in behind her. Mm -hmm. and, and just to see this person that you idolized all these years mm -hmm. standing there. Right. In the flesh. And you're 80, 45, so you're still looking pretty good in those years, you know? I mean, you're still oh, yeah. looking youthful, I'm sure, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So I walk over to him, and he's walking towards me. We, you know, he's introducing himself to everybody that's in the control room. And I shake his hand, and I say, hi, it's really nice to meet you. And he says, nice to meet you, too. And then he turns to the next guy. And as he turns to the next guy, I kind of back out of the control room and I'm standing in the hallway saying to myself, you have got to get your shit together, man. <laughs> he's, just a, he's just a guy, another musician, just like you are. He was a Beatles. But so you were self-aware that that was a little bit then, awkward. Then I started to yeah. weird myself out by saying he's a Beatle. He was the Beatle. He was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Opposite yeah, effect, right? It took, it, took, it took a moment to like calm down and, and think, okay, he's just like I am. Right. But he was so personable. He was. He took pictures with us. When uh, during the break, we we had uh, pizza and talked about children. Uh, uh, we um, were in between the songs. We would play. He played. He was playing piano on the songs. Uh, Neil Jason was playing bass. 
and David Brown and and um, from Billy's band and uh, uh, Dave LeBolt from Billy's band were involved in the session too. And in between the, the the takes, he would be playing Little Richard songs and Chuck Berry stuff. It was really great. I mean, when he started to sing, and you hear it come through your headphones, and then you look over, and that's that guy, that voice that's so familiar, mm-hmm. and he's he's sitting right there on the piano stool playing. Right. It was it was it was unbelievable. There's no words probably that could describe that feeling. I bet. You can't even, no. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You're in the studio with Paul McCartney. Was he a good piano player? Was he was he a great player, or was it you know was it like he's he's good as anybody else, or was he that really unbelievably great? Or no, he's a great rock player. I mean, okay. he wasn't as good as well, not like Billy mm-hmm. and not like Elton, mm-hmm. but you know because they are piano players. But okay, he, he right. can play. He can he can play piano. Okay, you know, block, okay. block out chords. You know how 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 tall was Paul? I, I always figure about five eight and a half. Yeah, probably about that tall. I would say his head probably came up to my eyes. Okay. You know? Okay. 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 So now you're Paul McCartney. I mean, were you thinking, okay, this, I, I did it. You know, I mean, little old me from Long Island watching these guys, and now I'm playing in the in a studio session. Uh, one of your highlights, I imagine, right up, up to that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable highlight. Okay. And what happens? How does it end? You just got to finish the session. It's like, okay, Paul, see you. Thanks, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. And every okay. time I uh, I saw John Eastman, which w- was his brother-in-law i guess or, or part of linda's family who, who was his attorney he kept saying yeah i got that song on my on my desk i listen to it all the time it's so great it's so you know it's like oh cool and then when we did the 9-11 thing uh, right uh, for the uh, In, at the garden at the garden yeah uh-huh. we, we're on backstage oh you were there oh you were there for that yeah oh, okay okay with, and, with, with billy yeah oh, okay 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 yeah i was still with billy up till 2003. Oh, so, so Billy performed on that on that thing with everybody. Yes. Okay. I, yes. Didn't, I didn't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and so uh, um, I'm in the hallway, and I'm I'm with Mark Rivera at the time, who played sax with Billy after Richie, and um, Paul comes walking down the hall, and I, and I said I said, uh, Hey, Paul, and he looked at me and he said, Hi, Liberty, and then he walked into a room. And Mark Rivera turned to me and he goes, oh, my God, he knows your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did play with you and he watched your videos, you know. Yeah. yeah. So what's the big deal? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, from that point of view. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Now, let's. Okay, well, let me just ask you one more thing, and then and then I want to I want to get into you meeting Bill, uh, Billy Joel. Is um, okay. is um, McCartney and Lennon uh, the comparison? Paul, the, the, he always says it's, uh, George Martin said it, it's like a dead even. It, it, being a, a pro- professional musician, how, how do you rank those two? Are they is it a dead even situation, musician wise? Uh, how do every, I rank them? Is, yeah, Lennon well, McCartney is is, is 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 it an equal? Are they equal? As far as as far as talent, overall charisma, you know, being in the beat, like the I'll just go Beatle years because overall I would say McCartney because of that longevity factor. But just Beatle years, you know. Well, well, I, I think mm-hmm. they 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 both wrote great songs. Mm-hmm. The, the the I I remember I read read somewhere where John once asked Yoko, "Why don't people sing my songs like they sing Paul's songs?" Right, you know, like. Paul has yesterday, and and you know the, the we can work it out. Those kind of songs. Paul John was deeper. Okay, okay. John John, John was like a, a, an insane poet. You know, right? Like, uh, right. You, this is some of the words. Like, like just the fact to make up words because people were trying to analyze his his lyrics to make up "I am the walrus." Mm-hmm. You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's like genius that I don't think Paul even got close to. Okay. You know, I think, okay. I think Paul had to actually have something to touch to write about. Okay. Right. Right. You know right. what I mean? Okay. And, and John could make shit up in his head. Okay. And it was that combination of, of that opposite thing they had going that, that, that made that chemistry. I mean, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Where, where, okay. where, you know, was well, well, Paul says it all the time. He, he, John wrote Strawberry Fields and, and Paul would go home and write Penny Lane. I, right, you know, right, 
Right, right. That that they, that was a perfect blend for the, for the two of them to be together like that, you know. And then as far as playing their instruments, insane. So so so, so John was an actual good guitarist. I know he said he was like the the quiet guitarist. He has some word he called himself. Yeah, um, I, I, you have to put a word before guitarist. You have to put the word rhythm guitarist. Okay, okay right. Mm-hmm. Okay. He he was the backbone of that that band that rhythm mm. the way he strummed that guitar mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay there's this uh song um uh i think it's uh i'll be back you know if you break my heart yeah a uh, song i'll be back yeah yeah he, i hear it a lot actually, on the beatles channel on he, that yeah he's yeah. actually playing next time you listen to it listen to the rhythm guitar on that okay he's actually he's actually playing the fills where a drummer would normally play the fills Okay, okay. Like okay. You know, he, like he's playing, you know, jing, jing, if you break my heart, I'll go, jing, 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 right. jing, jing, but I, you know, all that stuff. So, so the fills are where the drum should be? Yeah. Okay, okay. So that was part of that he, genius thing he probably had uh, in, intuitively to do that. Is that. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. And then Paul, on the other hand, is probably the most underrated bass player in the music business. He never seems to be in the top five in bassists, you know? No. Right, right. He, he's not flashy, but what he plays is, like, unbelievable. It's so musical. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. What's an example on one of the songs? Can you think of one? It's Penny Lane. It's, okay. It's a great one. Okay, 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 okay. You know? Right, right. On the... Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. To, me, to, to me, the genius is... is when was the last time, when was the first time, when was the last time you heard the bass start the song? Like, when he sings, in Penny Lane, that's the way the song starts, you hear the bass doubling it, going, boom, 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 starts right from the top. Right. Where normally, bass players wait till like the end of the first verse to come in. And then, how do you start Please Please Me without the bass? All you hear is, you know (laughs) it's brilliant right 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 the uh, one thing i always wondered uh, you uh, i went to ask you with the lennon thing on 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 all my loving i mean i love that part when it breaks into that instrumental that 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 thing you know is it is all of that and and then it really uh jangles pretty good is that is that lennon doing that or or who is that i know Lennon's doing that quick strum and stuff and then it and then it goes into that break or is that is that lennon's doing the you know that stuff right then he does that all my love and Ding, 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 ding. Right, right. That, that, um, yeah, it's almost like a, a ska thing it breaks into. Like, uh, uh, it goes from a straight thing to a bop, 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 you know? Right, 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 right. Which is, which is hard to explain because you know what else does it? Um, I Call Your Name does it too. Okay, um, okay. In the instrumental break, it goes into a, like a, almost a ska shuffle. Like when they used to play skiffle, right, right, yeah. Because the straight ahead, don't you know? I'm Lonnie, Lonnie, it. something, right? <laughs> Lonnie, Don, Don again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you know I can't take it? Right, ba, 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 yeah, ba. right. And then it goes, uh, then it goes into the instrumental plot. It's like a weird thing that happens. Okay, right. Okay, it's so freaking cool. I'm, I mean, I'm one of these guys that read the quotes and stuff, and Paul always says, yeah, my fans know more about my life than me, you know? I mean, I, I don't read, I'm not obsessive, but I read stuff from Paul. Like the way yeah. that John did on um, on Can't Buy Me Love, some kind of fill on the uh, the way he was, did rhythm on that. Uh, I remember him, he was he was impressed. John could have did the normal uh, flush over on it, but he, he did some kind of downbeat or something. Do you, do you know what that was? Yeah, no, I'm not familiar with that one. Okay, I don't know what it. he was talking about, you know. But I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I love the song, but I'm trying to picture John's role in that song, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about Harrison? I mean, he was overshadowed, but was he? He must have been great too, right? I mean, oh, George is George is a great little rock and roll player. Okay, you know, I mean, uh, I I know that that it's come out that Paul played a lot of guitar parts uh, on the records, uh-huh. like, right? Like, um, uh, a tax in, man. In, Right, tax man's Paul playing the lead and the 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 line. Right, because George couldn't get it or something. Right, was not that right, what the, right? Right, right. Uh, and help that they had a sort of tape down 
but it, but he eventually got it, you know, because you see him play it on the Ed Sullivan show, right? Uh, and live, he plays it. Okay, but um, um, there was another one I was going to say. Oh, uh, Paul plays Paperback Rider. That boom, ring, ring, or dan, or dan. Oh, uh, okay, that's Paul. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. The the the, the Brian Epstein. George Martin, was that a one in a billion shot? I mean, they line up, it seems like, with the right guys. You know, Brian Epstein is not going to rip them off, even though I know he didn't do great business deals. Martin seemed like the perfect guy, you know, for the producer. I mean, the timing, Kennedy gets killed. I mean, I don't know if that really comes into play with the, with the nation healing. You always hear that, but I, I wasn't there. But, I mean, I could see it could make sense. Was that a one yeah. in a billion shot for that to happen? I mean. I think I think you would call it the perfect storm, Okay, you know, Okay. You know, and they, they have that whole, this is going to meet this and that's going to meet that. But to me, first of all, first of all, I don't understand how four guys that live in the same town. Have you ever visited Liverpool? Yes. So you've seen where I, they I, live I, and everything? Okay. I went there with Billy J. Kramer, who was also signed to Brian Epstein at the time the Beatles were. Okay. And, uh, he uh the beatles wrote his first four hit singles he billy j kramer sang uh do you want to know a secret and i call your name before the beatles actually recorded them okay right and he had a big hit in, in england with uh do you want to know a secret before the beatles uh -huh. but but so i went to liverpool with him right and he, he took me all around told me where everything was and what happened oh of course there. a cool way to do it with a guy that's actually lived there yeah oh yeah it was so cool it was so cool. But how do four guys come from the same town and that happens? Right. You know, you know, if you would tell me that, oh, uh, uh, John came from California and George came from the Soviet Union and, uh, you know, and they all joined up together because somebody said, oh, there's this guy that you should know. Now, these guys were around the block from each other. Right. <laughs> <laughs> even more shocking that it happened that they're right there and it's you know yeah a mile away yeah 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 i mean yeah. before that elvis he came from one place okay you know it was just elvis though you know and he could pick and choose whoever he wanted to play with these were four guys that insisted on playing together and doing their own songs this is my little uh ray ray k opinion is is the way they looked you know it, it's almost I, I couldn't even think if you had to make up people to look like them it just seemed like it just it just worked so perfectly the way they looked uh, you know right. if they didn't right. look like that i wonder if they would have been as big you know right you weren't you weren't here in 64 when they went on the other television show those guys could have come from mars Right. Okay. Okay. They that form. not only okay. look so different, they had this accent that how, how many people did I know <laughs> with an English accent? <laughs> right. Right. Liverpool. Where the hell is Liverpool? <laughs> so the whole you thing. Know? Right. 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 The right. whole the suits, thing. Right. The hair look good. You know. They seem. Yeah. It just seems to everything. Just it just blows me away. Actually, I mean, I'm so. Every, yeah. Everything. 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 Right. Right. Everything right. was perfect. Yeah. Everything yeah. was perfect.